So many times I thought you'd leave me Broken inside, I feel I've lost my sanity I don't believe in happy endings Bottom of heart and hope you'd still love me in the end I got a new vlogging kit and it comes with a microphone and the microphone keeps interfering with everything else. So I don't know how many times I have refilmed this intro or how many times I have explained that I had already filmed Kamani getting her breakfast and then the sound was completely cut out because of the microphone. It was being super loud over the audio. <sighs> and then I'm kind of afraid to use it because um, I have to take off my phone case in order for the audio to pick up for the adapter to connect to my phone. Yeah, it's a lot. So today's video is a, not really a day in my life, but kind of like what I'm doing for the day. Um, it's mostly going to be outside stuff. I don't really film inside. Uh, if no one was home, I would, <laughs> but everybody's home, so I'm not doing that. Yeah. Um... Also, we may be getting a pony, so stay tuned for that video. Also, oh, since I have a microphone, would you guys want me to do an ASMR video for Kamani eating? If so, like, comment, and subscribe so that you guys don't miss that. Alright, I'll see you guys when I see ya. I know I'm dirty from working yesterday. I My hair is filthy and disgusted. I know, I look like a mess. But I don't care because I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> okay. Honestly, see you guys later on in the video. So I have my halter. I have two sugar cubes. Hopefully she doesn't, if she runs away, she doesn't knock my phone over. Please don't let her knock my phone over. And I'll be right back. Okay, so here I am desensitizing her. She's been a little head shy. Oh, and because of the wind, the um, microphone didn't pick up any of the sound in a few clips. And because of storage, my phone didn't get the end of the clips. So this video is kind of like a day in Kamani's life. It was meant to be something else, but it didn't work out. So as you guys can see, um, her hair is like a pink, but it's actually darker in person. It's like a raspberry red. So we are, for the second time ever lunging here i'm asking her to move her shoulder over a little bit and she's kind of ignoring so i get closer and just give her a little tap um so i go back into sensitize here but this is the second time we have ever um lunged on a lunge line here she's kind of being a little head shy so i'm just gonna keep it up um lunge on a lunge line in a huge open area where there is no fence line to follow now there is a barn and about a hundred feet away is a car and you know, 30, 40 feet away is water trough, but there's really no fence line for her to follow. Um, so that is what we're working on. We did one session of this last night with her, and she did really, really good. So, here I'm just giving her some love. So I was talking to you guys. I don't remember everything I said. Sorry, guys. Here, I'm sending her off. Now. I always start her off at a shot because that's what I've always done. I'm going to start fixing that. She has three cues. She has a walk cue, which I just installed in her, kind of. <laughs> I just started it last night, and it is kind of like that. And she goes off that really, really nicely just after a few minutes of it last night. Trot is kiss, and canter is and then backup is like a sprinkler kind of. And she's starting to really understand what this means, and she's really good, um, surprisingly, at the walk, considering I just taught her that last night. Uh, the trot, she, she knows it, but she kind of fights with me, like, I don't really want to, so that's why you guys see me tap her a few times when she's trotting, because she kind of goes really slow. Um, as for the canter, we've done a ton of trot work just to build up her balance, so we haven't done a bunch of canter, so that's not necessarily her fault that she's not that good at it. So there, I'm kind of getting after her because she slowed down. She knows better than that. 
but I do love how most of the time there is a very nice loose rein. Now there, she kind of freaked out, uh, dropped the whip, and she kind of just sped up and went to a canter and drug out. Now if she had sped up and kept the line loose, I wouldn't have cared. But since she drug, that's when I got after her. So with the canter, what I start off with the first few minutes is I ask for a couple strides and then I stop her to teach her that she's doing the correct thing. So here we are just working on some trotting. I love how she's starting to relax into the trot, keep a natural bend. She's still, here I'm asking for the canter. She still likes to, um, she's kind of giving me some attitude here so I'm just getting after her a little bit. Telling her, just keep up your pace, that's all I want. She still likes to drag her body out instead of arc it, which is fine. She's backing up really nicely when I stop her. I like to give her a little break while I'm talking to you guys. Um, I was talking about how she's arcing and not dragging most of the time. Right there, she was kind of jerking a little bit, kind of dragging, so I just popped the rope to bump her off of it. Here I asked for a canner, and there I asked for a canner. So I'll point and ask with my sound, and then if she doesn't, I'll crack the whip, and if she doesn't, then I'll spank her butt. But as soon as I say, whoa, she's getting better at stopping. Now here I'm working on just sending her directly off at a canner, changing directions quite a bit because she is dragging through a little bit on the canner. She's not horrible. Right there she got kind of close, so I spanked her on the butt. So when they get kind of out of control, um, just change their directions a bunch. Boog's really bad at changing direction, so I love her backup. <laughs> so I can't really do that as much with him, but her turns are like phenomenal. Now here's one thing I was talking about that I really love, is she loves to lower her head as soon as I stop her. Um, I'd like her to eventually learn to soften at the walk chalk canter on the lunge. And to, there she kind of came forward a little bit, so I just put my hand up. Um, and to soften her neck and lower her head while in work. But I, for right now, I will definitely take her keeping her head down while I stop her and rest her. Because that is the beginning stage for some horses. For Boog, it was at the trot that he would lower his head. So, just asking her to back up here. So I'm asking her to walk, so that's why you guys see me correct her there, she took off at a trot. So I like to, when she gets really hyper, make sure I can bring her down. This is one of the reasons I have not taken her quite yet on a walk, because um, she still gets a little out of control, she still likes to drag through me, she still likes to push her shoulder into me. I want to have complete control, and I don't want to sound like, you know, I have to have control of my horse. You know, I don't want to sound like that at all, but... Um, you know, I do need to have some control where I can keep her off me if she's scared and she's not going to drag the rope out of my hand. I love here her nice, quiet, calm walk. She's kind of taking her time. I absolutely love that because all we've been doing for the last little bit is trot. Now here you'll see the whip go over her. I'm just vlogging her while she's moving, getting her used to something coming on both sides and touching all over her while she is in movement. So that when I do eventually get on, it's not this huge shock. <laughs> Change directions, that was a nice turn. Same thing here. <clears throat> Ask for a trot. You can see me point my arm up. I'm working on getting my cues better and keeping my cues in line rather than making a bunch of cues and then wondering why she doesn't listen to them. <laughs> So it's working on myself too, you know, you, sometimes the horse doesn't need all the work. Sometimes you need to go out there and work with the horse to work on your own cues. Now I asked her to turn, she kind of ignored me a little bit, so I just cracked her up a little bit louder by her shoulder, by her eye. Now I don't mind that she's showing, showing some sass, but she's got a really nice stop to her too. <laughs> And I wish the audio would have stayed because what I could hear, the microphone actually picked up really nicely. But for some reason it's making like a buzzy noise. I think it's just the wind and the airplanes and the trains going by is messing it up. So looks like these videos will only be inside. 
I'm asking for a canner there, and she gave it to me. I had to get after her a little bit to keep it. You can see her selling down. There, I asked her to stop. And here, I'm just desensitizing a little bit. Because I did spank her for a little while ago for coming in really, really close to me. Just making sure she's good. I'm talking about how I'm loving that head going low and that leg being cocked and her just relaxing. And point. And spank. Because I'm asking for the canter. I'm wanting her to go straight into the canter. She kind of ignored. So there she kind of pulled on me. So I yanked her off her balance. And she wanted to change direction, and she actually completely dragged me back here and gave me rope burn. So I just kept at that shoulder until I got her to canter a little bit and, and get out and go the way I wanted. And then when she did, I stopped and brought her back. The old me would have probably whacked the crap out of her for it. But I go right back into work when we get back. She has to go right back into moving. So she learns that it's not this easy thing to drag me and get away with it. So when she gets a little heavy, I just bump her and change directions. And I think that was the only time she dragged through me. But I don't mind this tail swishing and her little sassy little attitude. She's not doing anything bad. She's not kicking at me. She's not charging at me. She's just showing a little bit of attitude that I don't want to be doing this, which is perfectly fine. I don't, I don't care about that. So let's go into the barn now. So here I'm fly spraying her with actual fly spray. We finally got some. And she's doing really nice ground tying. The only thing with her ground tying is as soon as I walk away, she is gone. So <laughs> we're working on that in the round pen. And I'll, if you guys want to see a video on working on ground tying, comment down below. Now, I do something that um, some people don't agree with. I do fly spray their face, but I cover their eyes when I do it. And she's not a fan, um, as we've seen, of her eyes being covered. So um, you'll see kind of how I work through that. So I cover her eye, and then I start spraying. Now, of course, she's going to freak out a little bit. Her eyes covered, and all of a sudden, there's this noise, and there's thing spraying all over her face. So if she wants to move her head away, I just keep spraying. And as soon as she stops moving away, I stop. She'll eventually get used to it. I know some people like to put it on a rag. Here she's being a little jumpy because she just had her eye covered and had something put on her. That's completely normal. I ignore it. I don't care too much about it. I ask her to lower her head here. Cover this eye. Talk to her. Spray. She's taking her head away. Just going to keep spraying. Just keep spraying here. I accidentally got the inside of her ear. That's why she jumped there. And as soon as she relaxes and stops... I will remove my hand and I will stop spraying. And then here I go and do the tips of her nose and the side of her cheek. I'm not even going for her eyes. I'm going in between her eyes. So here I've got some pool noodles I'm letting her investigate and play with. <laughs> she used to hate pool noodles. Remember she tore them off of my rump pin. You see her licking and chewing. I just practice kind of thumping her on the head with them. Not hard. Just tapping. Just get her used to something rubbing all over her. You can see her trying to smell and play with it. You can see her lip going up. She's a goofy girl. She wants to play with it. She's very playful. She actually, she is really, really playful. You guys will get to see that here in a minute with the hula hoop. Practice rubbing all over her body. Now, I talked about this, um, but of course the... Excuse me, the audio did not pick up. Um, so what I'm talking about here is a mare's udders has to be cleaned. You need to pull apart their udders and clean up in there. She does not like me touching there, and I am no way in heck sticking my face just directly underneath there. I think pool noodles are better than whips to start off with this process to rub up in between the udders. You can see her tail swish there, and then she just kind of drops her head and relaxes. 
so she was actually starting to enjoy that so that's really really good um because that means later on in life if i decide to breed her or if she is pregnant you know if we'll be able to nurse if we have to milk her you know my mom's had to milk a pregnant mare before or not a pregnant mare but a mare that just gave birth um, here I'm just tapping all over. I just wanted to be comfortable with being touched everywhere in case something happens. Because we've already seen her get sick twice and get a couple of cuts. So I was talking about here um, is I want her to right now. I want her to now stand still while I'm tapping on her with the pull needle. But later on um, when I start her under saddle I will use this to my advantage. And I will just keep, I'm a, as I'm going to demonstrate here in a second... Is I will just keep tapping where my foot would go and um, just keep up a constant steady pressure with the pool noodle to teach her to move off the slightest pressure so that when I get on her I don't have to kick the living crap out of her to get her to go. Um, Boog I actually had to take you know my reins and whack him to get him to canter and I don't want to you know I don't want to have to do that I want her to understand that she needs to move off the slightest pressure. But since we're not starting her right this second, I'm not going to worry about teaching her that just yet. I still need to teach her to move her four quarters, uh, which we did a little bit on last night. I did not film. It was dark. I just played with her last night while her mane was drying. So, but we did no more than five minutes. So here I'm practicing tapping the ceiling above her and waving it above her. You can see her get a little bit worried, but she does have a cocked leg and... She's not going anywhere. She's a little bit worried. But you can see she's not so worried that she thinks she needs to move. So I'm practicing whacking it, or not whacking, but tapping it on both sides of her. And just getting her used to seeing two things moving over the top of her at once. Just kind of throwing it. This one has a bag on it. So I'm practicing tapping that all over her. You can see her head raise a little bit, but she does keep that inside ear on me. And she's keeping her leg cocked. And now I'm having the bag rub all over her udders. And I love how she's just kind of taking it. Here, mask and her turn for you guys. So I'm sorry I left such a long video for you guys. But, you know, these things are educational. And um, I do make a lot of cuts to my videos. There are a lot of cuts to this one, but just for time's sake, because otherwise it would have been an hour long video. <laughs> so just to keep that in mind that sometimes I'm going to leave a longer video for the people who are interested in seeing the full process and how I corrected certain situations. So here I'm just practicing rubbing her flank with the bag and the pool noodle, her boobs, her udders, whatever you call them. And she's doing really, really, really good. Practicing rubbing it all over the top of her head and her ears. Waving it above, throwing it over her. And as you can see, she doesn't care anymore. So here's pretty funny. Um, I'm just practicing rubbing her ears because she still gets a little head shy with her ears. But what's really funny here is she never really offers to play with anything. So here I'm practicing her go head going down on command. And you can see her kind of sticking her nose out. She's wanting to bite and play with the hula hoop. So I allow it. This is a toy. She can bite a toy. And she actually hangs on to it for a second here. You'll see it very quick for a second she bites right here and just holds it and then when I get beside her she drops it so I just spend a little bit getting her to play with it and just enjoy it and not be afraid of it <laughs> and I'm really happy that she's letting me rub it all over her lips She's letting me stick my finger in her mouth, open her mouth, and stick the hula hoop in. She's not raising her head and fighting me. All good things. Um, if your horse is playful with hula hoops, well, you could use this as an introduction to a bit. Or to your finger being put inside of their mouth. Practice rubbing her neck. <laughs> she kind of grabs it right there. She is just a goofy, goofy pony. You can see here she lowers her head with it, and I just throw a pool noodle on it. 
and act all silly. <laughs> and she just, she doesn't care. Oh, she's going to be such a good horse. And practice rubbing it all over, rubbing it on her butt. Rubbing it on her flank. All over. Because it makes noise, it rattles, it's round, it touches everywhere. You see, she doesn't really care. So, here she cares. But, I mean, she's always been a little bit with her head. So, that's just going to take time. I wouldn't say she's necessarily head shy. I think just sometimes she's unsure. And until she's used to the situation, she just kind of keeps her head up. I wouldn't consider it to be head shy. I just considered it a worried or unsure reaction. There's, there is a big difference, in my opinion. You can see her playing with it. I'm getting her to smile and she's lipping it. She's just a goof. I'm lowering her head pretty nicely right here. I'm biting and playing with it. <laughs> She cracks me up. There's days when I just want to sell her and say to heck with her. And then there's days where I just love her so much. Licking and chewing while I'm rubbing her butt. That's a really, really good thing. Here I'm just kind of tossing it under her stomach. Throwing the, pulling it under her stomach. She doesn't really care. She's just going to sleep. Now here's pretty funny. I move the hula hoop and it just scares her just a tad. She barely flinched. Now here, I'm just practicing jumping up and down. She, you can see she gets a tad bit worried, but obviously not that much. <laughs> she's just kind of raising her head. She's not moving away. She's not cocking up that leg at me, trying to cow kick me. She's not flinching. She's just kind of like, what are you doing back there? <laughs> Just practice and jump in. She don't really care. Such a goober. Okay, so here I'm allowing her to smell the tire. Unfortunately, my camera did not have enough storage. She actually did get a leg in. But I want to show you the process of what we went through before that happened because quite a bit happened that I explained but the audio did not pick up. So I allow her to investigate and she just kind of smells it once or twice and is like, I don't really care. Because that tire has been in there with her before uh, when she first got there. That tire had been in there with her and she kind of stomped on it a little bit. So she doesn't really care. So that's fine. The first thing I'm going to do is ask her to back up. She's getting lighter and lighter with that. Now what I'm going to do is I turned her around and I asked her to go over it. <laughs> I was hoping she'd go through it and she jumped it. Of course, Kamani is an overachiever. But I want to show you some corrections I made to help her stop being a little bit pushy with me. Um, they look a little harsh from the side, but I promise you they're not. So right here... Um, she kind of walked between me and the tire, and I just spanked her on the butt because I was so close to the tire. I don't want her learning that it is okay to do that. If she wants to um, go around it, she needs to go around it between the fence and the tire where there's more room. You see how she kind of went right there between me and the tire really, really close. So I spanked her on the butt. And the only reason I'm spanking her for this, there, I left her alone because she went around it is because she does tend to shoulder in and kind of push me over. If she didn't do that, I might not care as much, but since I still haven't gotten full control of her shoulders when she is worried, um, I don't want to teach her that it's okay to go between me in a tight space. That's why when I do my sinning exercises, I'm quite far from the fence until I can get control of that shoulder. Now here, she kind of, I'm just keeping her turning. 
back and forth a little bit until she's in front of the tire. If she wants to back into the fence, I don't care. That's, that's all her. Here, I'm asking her forward. And I'm just trying to get her legs to touch the tire. So right there, she's trying to come in around me. So that's why you see her kind of fidgeting and me tap her. So as soon as she goes back on the opposite side of the tire, then I leave her alone. I'm just kind of wanting her legs to bump up against it. And since she tried to go between me and the tire yet again, that's why I am correcting her. Now, they're not major corrections. The first ones were kind of big because I have worked with her so much to get off of me. So it's just kind of like a reminder. Now you can see here, I'm asking her to turn. She's trying to go between me and the tire. She does. So I spank her on the butt and I make her work a little bit. And this is just teaching her that, look, it's okay if you're afraid, but you need to go around the opposite way. And this is going to help when I take her out on her first walk when she gets scared. She's going to kind of lean out the opposite way rather than go on top of me. Now there she jumped it and kind of threw a little bit of a fit. So I just got after her and make her work. When I spank her and get after her, I don't care about the tail switch. She's not biting. She's not charging. She's not kicking. She's not nipping me. She's not headbutting me. So I don't care about that little tail switch. That's her being frustrated and upset. And I'm going to allow her to do that. I've seen people constantly whack on the horses until they stop, um, swishing their tail and I'm not a fan of that so I just send her back and forth here a couple times there she came in on my side so I work her as soon as she goes out on her side I'll leave her alone and she picks up that concept really really quickly now as I go to talk about on this video I have prepared her feet as much as I possibly can I have handled them they have been done the tarp has been on them the hose has been on them I have wrapped ropes around all four feet and pulled around on them um I have fly sprayed them uh, you name it, I've done it with her feet. I have not hobbled her, but I have done everything else. So, unfortunately, I don't get it on camera, um, but she does get one leg in, and then when she goes to pull her leg out, of course, you know, her hawk kind of gets caught on that lip, and instead of her freaking out, she just put her foot down, stepped forward, and took her foot out. Here's a good voice command. I taught her down with her head, so I'm able to point down and say the word. She does not keep her head down, but she does lower it when I say the word, so she does understand the concept. So all I'm doing here is just asking for little bits of her to take her hoof and kind of touch up against that part, and when she does, I leave her alone. There she's touching. So I left her alone for a quick second, and now I'm just applying some steady pressure there she just about stepped on it so I released the pressure but then she decided to step over it that's fine now you can see there she kind of got her legs in a bind so I was hoping right here that I could go up that hip and get her to turn and get this leg closer to you guys to step in but she kind of outsmarted me and kind of picked up on what I was doing and she was able to get out of it which is completely fine I want a smart horse too <laughs> I want somebody or not somebody I want a horse that can problem solve so not necessarily a big deal for me. So that's what I'm explaining here. So this front leg closer to us, she did get in, but unfortunately, again, my phone stopped going, so I'm terribly sorry. But you can see she lifted and attempted, so I stopped and left her alone. She cocked her leg. I go in and love on her. So there I'm asking her with the whip just to move that shoulder, and she did, so I'm very proud of that. So here's, unfortunately, in a second where the camera cuts off. I am very sorry, and this was supposed to be a vlog, but instead it just kind of ended up being a training day in Kamani's life, kind of random things that we do. So I hope you guys love this video. If you want an ASMR or any other type of video, comment down below, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!